Hey there class, welcome back to Game Dev Academy. I'm Shane. Make sure you sign the register by leaving a comment way down below. Just like these amazing students did in the last class. This class is going to focus on making the game a bit more predictable. So at the end of the last step I showed you that the kind of bounce was a little bit out of our control. We can get some weird acute angles that we don't want. And in this one we're going to get what that angle is from the ball. We're going to change it to be an angle that we want it to be and then put it back onto the ball using blueprints again. So if you're feeling ready, let's get stuck in. Right, here we go then. This step is going to be all about controlling the way this ball is going to move so that it behaves predictably and in a way that's going to be more fun. So we're going to keep it at 45 degree sort of increments of, no, at 90 degree increments that, that's going to run diagonal. So what we need to do is get into the blueprint for the ball and set this up. Here we go. So let's go into our blueprints folder. Here's my ball. And I'm going to hop straight into the event graph when it opens up. <laughs> Here it is. So this is my event graph. So what I'm going to do is create a new custom event. And that's going to be the thing that will happen that's going to make the ball do what we want it to do. So I'll right click and I'm just going to start typing custom event. And then the first thing I'll need to do is give this a name. And I'm going to call this velocity, since we're also going to use this to keep the, the speed the same. Uh, and angle is what I'm going to call it. There might be better names for it, but I know what this means, so that means it works for me. And we're going to call this every tick. So what I'm going to do, we've got something happening on event begin play. But up here, I'm just going to have event tick so this will happen every cpu cycle and it's going to run uh, velocity and angle there we go so that's set up so now what we need to do is build this script and it's going to be slightly more complex than what we've done so far the difficulty curve kind of goes like like this straight up so stick with me and i'll try and explain what i'm doing as i'm doing it so the first thing we need to do is get the velocity of the ball so the ball will already be moving and we need to get that information before we can manipulate it. So I'm going to do get velocity, and it's this one here. And it will say target is actor, which is what we want, because that's our ball. So we'll do that first of all. And then what we want to do is clamp that. So out of the return value, I'm going to type clamp vector size. And what this will allow us to do is to clamp that velocity, the actual speed, to a constant value. So you could clamp it between like a high and low value, but we want to keep it exactly the same speed and we'll use this node to do that. So we'll need a new variable to represent the, the speed of the ball. So here I'm just going to click on plus and I'm going to call it ball speed. And we want this to be a float. So I'm just going to select this. I'm going to change it from Boolean to float, remembering that float is a number that can have decimal places. And then we'll compile that so that we can set the default value to for this to 1000 like that and that means that the ball will start out at that velocity at that speed so what we'll do now is we'll get this ball speed and we'll bring that in and get and we're going to plug this into the min and the max values of the clamp vector size so what that will do is it's going to take whatever its velocity is and make sure that it can only be 1000 and what it also means is that when we come back into this variable at any point we, if we think the ball is running too fast, we can change it. If it's running too slow, we can change it. Or if we want to speed up this, like the speed of the ball throughout the game to make it more complicated, then we can control that here as well, which makes it nice and easy. So that will basically control the speed. What we now need to do is get the angle sorted out. And we're going to take this vector size. So we've got the speed so far, but we haven't really done the angle. So let's drag out a return value. And then we'll create something called a rotate vector. Here it is. And we can use this to take the vector, which is the direction the ball's moving it, and rotate it to be whichever direction we want it to be in. So to do that, we're going to drag out of here and get something called a make rotator. This little chap here. And we're going to set the z-axis, which is the yaw, to 45. And it's this change here that's going to make sure that we're always operating in diagonals, which is what we want. So out of the return value of this, we're going to create a make rot from x and then what we need to do this return value has got x y and z properties but we need to control those individually 
And in order to do that, we can right click on it and we can split the struct pin, which then will give us return values for each of the three axes we can rotate on. So what we'll do now is get the return value from the z-axis and we need to divide that. So this will be returning a number which will be a float and we're going to divide that by 90 so we can use that to give us one of four angles. You'll see how it works in a minute. So you can get a divide by either putting in a forward slash or you can type divide and I'm going to do a float divided by float. And I want to divide this number by 90. And that will mean that whatever the angle is, it's going to, when we round this, it can only be one of four angles. So the problem with this at the moment, though, is that we can't work with it yet until we round it up or down to the nearest integer. So we're going to drag out of here, take the result, and we're going to do a round. And that will round the number to the nearest integer. And you can see the colour coming out of here has changed now because it will only return an integer, which is what we want. So if we take a number like, uh, let's say it's going at an angle of 160 and divide that by 90, round it, and then what we'll do next in a minute is multiply it by 90. That's actually going to round it back up to 180 degrees. So it only gives us the angles that we want. So we're going to take the return value then and we're going to multiply. So again, you can either type multiply to get this. Or you can just put in an asterisk and we're going to do an integer and we're going to times it by integer in this case. And we're going to times this by 90 or multiply this by 90. There we go. Lovely stuff so far. So what we've done then is taken what is in any number between sort of 0 to 360 or 0 to minus 360. Done some cool maths with it. And we've spat out an angle that can only be 0, 90, 180, 270, 360, or minus 90, 180, 270. And that's going to be what keeps control of this ball for us. So we'll get a make rotator. And then the result of this needs to be plugged back into Z. So in doing that, you'll see this little conversion node comes up. And it takes the integer and changes it back to a float. Now what I could have done is I could have done a, an integer times float here and then the output would have been a float but I wanted to show you what happens if you need to convert one type of number to another. Unreal Engine works that out for you which is a nice handy little trick. So with this value we're going to get the return value and we're going to connect it to a get rotation x vector and this is what we can use then to control the direction of the ball again and then we need to unrotate this so out of here we're going to go unrotate vector lovely and then we need to make sure that we're getting it at 45 degrees again so from here this one here the make rotator we could make a new one over here if we wanted to but what i'm going to do is just drag the result here into there because these are both doing the same thing so we're rotating it here and then we're unrotating it again here uh, by 45 degrees so we need to multiply this by a vector length now. So let's create a vector length. Length, there it is, vector length. And we can see that the result of this is a float. So out of here, we need to do a multiply. And we're going to do a vector multiplied by float. So let's plug that in there. And then we need to figure out what to do with the result. But before we can do that, we need to get something coming into the vector length, which is going to be the speed of the ball. So... Here's the ball speed. So the clamp vector here is what needs to come out of here. So we're going to bring this over here. And oh, I'm so lost right now. And then plug that in there. So that that's getting the speed that can be multiplied by the angle. And then we're going to use this output here. So we've got angle up here, speed here. And then we're going to put that back onto the ball. So we started way back at the beginning by getting what was happening with the ball. And now, now we've done all this modification of it. We're going to put it back onto the ball. So out of here, we're going to create a set physics linear velocity of the ball. There we go. And what it does is it gets the ball for us. So the static mesh here, so that it knows that's the target. And the new velocity is the result of this maths that we've been doing. Okay, so now we need to trigger all this. And so to do that, we've got an execution pin all the way over here. And so I'm just going to bring this over. And this just needs to be connected in here. 
So every tick, what's going to happen is this is going to be triggered, which by the time we've gone through it all, we are getting the velocity, modifying it, changing the angle, putting it all back together, and that's our new velocity. So what we need to do now is compile and save this, and then we'll give it a test and see whether or not it allows us to get any different angles. And what I'm going to do here is just a little trick. So as well as doing this, I'm just going to get it to print the, the angle of the ball so that I know what's happening. So what I'm going to do is, after it's done this, I'm going to do a print string. And this will print the angle for me as some text in the top left hand corner of the screen. So as I'm only really interested in the angle, I'm going to get out of here the make rotator. We'll plug that into the in string. Again, it will convert it because it's coming out as one type and we want it as a text string. So we can see that modification happening. So I'll compile that again, save, and then let's test. Ball's not launching. Okay then, so it's clear that the testing has highlighted a problem. Uh, and I know what it is, I've done something very silly. So, the way we've currently got it set up, we're actually using a set physics linear velocity here. And that's what I should have used in the first place, I should have got the physics linear velocity, but instead, I used this nonsense node here, the get velocity. So we need to swap that out. So instead of get velocity, we're gonna use get linear physics velocity for the ball. That's the one that we should have used. I apologize for showing you the wrong thing. Um, so we'll need to swap this out. So let's get rid of that and we will drop this bad boy in its place. And then what we need to do is this execution pin here needs to go back over here and the first thing we're going to do is get the, velo the velocity and then the return value is going to go into there and then we can take this pin here and plug it into there. Ah, or we could if I was a better aim. There we go. So what we do now, it'll make more sense, is we are running this custom event. Let's get the current velocity of the ball, the physics linear velocity, as we should have done in the first place. Do all the same things to it and then set it back onto the ball. And we'll do the print string again to see whether or not it's working this time. So let's compile and save. Cross your fingers. Hey, 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 there we go. And then you should be able to see that on Y, um, the the angle is changing. So there we've got minus 90. There's 90 as it comes back down. There's 180. And that's what that maths has done for us. It's making sure that the ball will only ever move at one of those four predetermined angles as we've set them. And that will ensure that the game remains predictable, that the ball's not going to spend too long at one end of the play field, and that's going to keep the pace of the game up. You can obviously do your own little trickery with the maths to get uh, the ball moving in different directions if that's what you want, or to kind of correct it if it's moving at any unwanted angles. But as I'm doing this as a making your first game in Unreal Engine tutorial, I don't really want to make it any more complicated than that. Because as you can see, I've done this before and I still cocked it up. So there we go. What we'll do now then is we'll remove this print string because we've it's served its purpose. So in the next step, what we'll be doing is just kind of tidying up the work that we've done in this step. So we're going to use something called reroute notes to try and tidy up some of this spaghetti looking stuff here. And we're also going to comment any of the bits that we haven't done so far. So these areas could do with commenting uh, just to keep on top of things. So it doesn't get too confusing. Plus it'll be a nice uh, easy step after this more complicated one. I think we're all ready for a little bit of a breather. That was hard work. So, I will see you in the next step. I believe that quality education should be available to everybody, and for that reason, all of the classes at Game Dev Academy are completely free, and we're supported by our very generous school governors over at Patreon. If you'd like to become a Game Dev Academy governor and support our work, as well as helping us to steer the channel in the right direction, then use the link in the description to be taken to the Patreon page.